Alaska lies at the extreme northwest of the North American continent, and is the largest peninsula in the Western Hemisphere. Alaska is bounded by the Beaufort Sea and the Arctic Ocean to the north, Canada's Yukon Territory and British Columbia Province to the east, the Gulf of Alaska and the Pacific Ocean to the south, the Bering Strait and the Bering Sea to the west, and the Chukchi Sea to the northwest. Alaska is central to the Great Circle Route, connecting North America with Asia by sea and air, and is equidistant from most of Asia and Europe. Indeed, Alaska has an immense area and a great variety of physical characteristics. Aside from its mainland peninsula, the state includes about 15,000 square miles of fjords and inlets and about 34,000 miles of indented tidal coastline. Nearly one-third of the state lies within the Arctic Circle, and about four-fifths of Alaska is underlain by permanently frozen sediment and rock. The southern coast and the panhandle at sea level are fully temperate regions. In those and in the adjoining Canadian areas, however, lies the world's largest expanse of glacial ice outside Greenland and Antarctica. Alaska has more than 130 active volcanoes, most of which are on the Aleutian Islands and the adjacent Alaska Peninsula. Upon attaining statehood, Alaska increased the size of the United States by nearly one-fifth. The new area included vast stretches of unexplored land and untapped resources. Its settlement and exploitation have been hindered by its distance from the rest of the country and by geographic and climatic impediments to travel and communications. Besides it, Alaska continues to be the country's last frontier. The difficulty of finding a balance between conservation and development, in an enormous land, has been ongoing since the beginning of the 20th century. Alaska's residents, and the state and federal governments, have had to make delicate decisions on such major issues, as a natural gas pipeline project. One of the major conflicts occurred in the late 1960s and early 1970s between conservationists and petroleum companies over the proposed Trans-Alaska Pipeline, which now runs from the oil-rich North Slope on the Arctic Ocean to Valdez. The debate intensified following a catastrophic oil spill in 1989, when the tanker Exxon Valdez released some 250,000 barrels of oil into Prince William Sound. Alaska comprises eight distinct physiographic and environmental regions. Much of the mainland region, which is wide lying east and south of the Street Elias Mountains, is composed of the boundary ranges. There are several large ice fields there. The peaks include Mount Street Elias, from whose summit the Alaska-Yukon border shifts due north, following the 141st meridian. The 
western extension of that mountain chain, is the Chugok Range, a giant arc at the northernmost edge of the Gulf of Alaska. Many of the ranges, remote valleys, and high ridges, are still unexplored, and the relief and glaciation inhibit exploitation. The coast is characterized by frequent and intense oceanic storm systems that have produced dense rainforests on the coastal mountain flanks. The region of the South Coastal Archipelago and the Gulf of Alaska Islands includes the Alexander Archipelago and the Panhandle region, with 1,100 islands, as well as Kodiak Island just southeast of the Alaska Peninsula, and its satellites south of Cook Inlet. Those islands are lower, less rugged, and less glaciated. All receive heavy rain, and are affected by waters warmed by both, the Kuroshio and Alaska currents. The Aleutian region includes the Alaska Peninsula, which forms the south shoreline of Bristol Bay, and the 1,100-mile-long 1 Aleutian Island chain, which separates the North Pacific from the Bering Sea. The chain includes 14 large islands, 55 significant but smaller ones, and numerous islets. The broad Alaska Range region connects the Aleutian Range with the Wrangell Mountains, which is the vast complex of the Street Elias Mountains. The low-lying interior basin region between the Alaska Range in the north and the Street Elias Mountains to the south and east enjoy a relatively temperate climate. The valleys of the Susitna and Matanuska Rivers, Cook Inlet, and the Kenai Peninsula are where the majority of Alaskans live. The central plains and lowlands of Alaska's interior constitute a vast region of rivers and truncated tablelands, as well as extensive areas of wetlands formed from melting permafrost. The Arctic coastal plain to the north of the Brooks Range, often referred to as the North Slope, has a truly polar environment. Here, the ground and the waters along the coast are frozen for eight months of the year. It is treeless and in summer, grasses and arctic alpine flowers abound. The Colville River flows through the center of this region, and lies along the eastern edge of the National Petroleum Reserve. Because of the permanently frozen ground, the Arctic coastal plain contains countless shallow lakes that provide summer food for migratory birds. Alaska is known for its variable climate, which is influenced by ocean currents. The western coasts are bathed by the Alaska Current which carries relatively warm Pacific waters northward and westward along the southern Aleutian Islands.
Those warm waters enter the Bering Sea and then flow eastward along the northern coast of the Aleutians. The mixing of the warm waters with the Bering Sea's cold waters contributes to an atmospheric low pressure center known as the Aleutian Low. The Panhandle and Southern Islands are covered with Sitka spruce, hemlock, some Alaskan cedar, and other evergreens. The interior is dominated by black spruce and white spruce, which form a stable forest community that has adapted to its natural ecological succession. Birch, willow, and aspen trees are also prevalent in the interior. The islands of the Bering Sea represent a small but unique Arctic maritime environment. Those tundra-covered islands are surrounded by sea ice in winter, and serve as protected refuges for the world's largest herds of fur-bearing seals and sea otters, as well as sea lions and walruses. Denali National Park and Preserve has an abundance of wildlife, including brown and grizzly bears, reindeer, wolves, and moose. The North Slope is home to large herds of reindeer in the summer. Those ones migrate from south of the Brooks Range to the Arctic Coastal Plain for breeding. Here, constant winds eliminate insects, and the reindeer can see its enemy, the wolf, from a great distance. Large numbers of migratory birds nest in both the interior and on the Arctic coastal plain. Thousands of years before Danish explorer Vitus Bering arrived in Alaska in 1741, the Tlingit and Haida peoples were living in the southern and southeastern coast areas. The Shimshian people of Metlakatla migrated to Alaska from British Columbia during the latter decades of the 19th century. According to the 2020 census, American Indians and Alaska Natives constitute about 16% of the state's population. The Russian-American company brought the first Christian missionaries to Alaska. One of the most famous of those was Innocent Vinyaminov, who became Metropolitan Innocent of Moscow and was later canonized. The Russian Orthodox Church converted many Alaska natives to Christianity, and today has its main cathedral in Anchorage. More than three-fifths of Alaskans live in the Greater Anchorage Kenai Peninsula area. This region is known for its milder temperatures, proximity to the sea, ice-free ports, and petroleum and natural gas development. It is also the center of air, road, and rail transportation and the headquarters of Alaska's major banks, corporations, and federal and state administrative agencies. More than one-eighth of the population lives in the Greater Fairbanks area, including the town of Delta Junction, historically the center of gold mining and the terminus of the Alaska Railroad, which runs from Seward to Fairbanks.
Many Alaskans also live in small communities situated along rivers, highways, or the coast. The first major wave of in-migration from the United States towards Alaska occurred in the 1880s when gold was discovered and fish canneries were developed. The construction of the Alaska Railroad and the development of copper mining at Kennecott attracted more settlers throughout the 1920s and 1930s. More than 1.2 million hectares of potentially tillable land exist in Alaska, but only a small portion of the state's economy is agricultural, and most foods must be imported. The state government promoted agricultural expansion in the 1970s, but the amount of cultivable land brought into production was small, and no major expansions have been made since then. Commercial farming is concentrated in the north side of Anchorage near the town of Delta Junction, which is southeast of Fairbanks, and to a lesser degree in the Kenai Peninsula. There is also considerable small-scale farming in the Fairbanks area itself where vegetables, potatoes, and various grains grow rapidly because of the long hours of summer sunlight. Most of Alaska's commercial timber resources are in the Tongass and Chugok National Forests, respectively, in the Panhandle and on the southern coast. Due to logging regulations, which restricted timber leases, Alaskan timber and forestry-related activities and exports were significantly reduced. Alaska's commercial fishing economy is one of the country's most significant, and the port of Kodiak is one of the largest fishing ports in the United States. Most of Alaska's fish production is exported. Commercial fishing fleets also bring in significant quantities of herring, cod, pollock, and halibut, as well as crabs. Mining is vital to the economies of Southeast Alaska providing jobs for thousands of Alaskans and millions of dollars of personal income. Alaska's mining industry includes exploration, mine development, and mineral production. Alaska's mines produce coal, gold, lead, silver, zinc as well as construction materials such as sand gravel and rock oil seeps were discovered as early as the 1880s in what is now the National Petroleum Reserve Alaska and petroleum was first extracted and refined between 1917 and 1933 in Kataya near Cordova. However, it was not until the development of the Kenai oil field in 1961 that the petroleum and natural gas industry surpassed the other types of Alaskan mineral production. In 
In the late 1960s another major oil field was discovered at Prada Bay, near the mouth of the Colville River, on the North Slope. A natural gas pipeline connects the Kenai gas fields to Anchorage, and the Trans-Alaska Pipeline delivers oil from Prada Bay to ice-free tanker terminals at Valdez and to refineries near Fairbanks. Oil production peaked in the 1990s and has declined steadily since then. Similarly, natural gas production also declined significantly in the Kenai and Cook Inlet. Alaska's coal resources make up about half of the United States coal resource base, and approximately one-sixth of the world coal resource base. Alaska's total identified coal resources amount to more than 160 billion tons, and hypothetical and speculative resources are as great as 5.5 trillion tons. Most of Alaska's coals are bituminous, but there is a large secondary class of subituminous coal and minor lignite and anthracite deposits. Alaska has a strong track record of developing successful hydroelectric projects that provide clean, reliable energy across the state. Hydroelectric power is Alaska's largest source of renewable energy, supplying about 21% of the state's electrical energy in an average water year. Still, other projects increase annual energy production by diverting rivers to existing hydroelectric storage reservoirs and power plants. These projects allow more efficient use of existing infrastructure, including intake structures, dams, powerhouses, generation equipment, roads, and transmission lines. Most of the state's developed hydro resources are located in South Central, the Alaska Peninsula, and Southeast, mountainous regions with moderate to high precipitation. High costs of transportation continue to sap Alaska's economic development largely because the major transportation links both internal and external are by air which provides the fastest way to cross alaska's great distances and formidable terrain numerous national airlines serve alaska and there are international airports at anchorage fairbanks Juneau, and ketchikan In the 1990s, Alaska became a central point for long-distance air cargo shipment connecting Asia, the United States, and Europe, and many American and European cargo airlines now fly through Anchorage and Fairbanks. Most of the state's major highways are surfaced, but gravel roads still exist. The Dalton Highway, 
A 414-mile road combines with the existing highway system to provide an overland route from the ice-free southern ports to the Arctic Ocean. Ocean shipping connects Seattle, Vancouver, and the Trans-Canada Railhead to towns in the Panhandle and towns of Cordova, Valdez, Seward, and Kodiak. During the ice-free midsummer months, ocean-going vessels call in Nome, Barrow, and Prada Bay. Anchorage is Alaska's major port for imports, while petroleum is exported from Kenai and Valdez, and fish are exported from southeast port cities, particularly Kodiak and Unalaska. The Alaska Marine Highway is a ferry system with passenger and vehicle service that runs from Bellingham, Washington, or Prince Rupert, British Columbia, northward across the Gulf of Alaska, into Prince William Sound, and onto the Aleutian Chain, making stops in more than 30 coastal towns and cities along the way. Many tourists take the ferries and disembark at Haines or Skagway, inland communities, that provide access to highways, where they can drive their vehicles farther into the mainland. Alaska Railroad runs for about 500 miles, linking Seward, Anchorage, and Fairbanks. The White Pass and Yukon Route Railway operates from May through September and travels from Skagway into the Yukon Territory. It's a marvelous way to enjoy the wilderness scenery of Alaska. I enjoyed an awesome day trip from Anchorage to Seward, in a little over four hours. This train adventure could be a once-in-a-lifetime experience for most. For train enthusiasts, it's an absolute must. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please don't forget to give a like, share, and subscribe.